Top 25 API Design Interview Questions and Answers In the fast-evolving tech landscape, API design plays a crucial role in seamless software integration. This video focuses on the top 25 interview questions and answers that can help candidates effectively prepare for API design-related interviews. We will explore fundamental concepts, best practices, and real-world scenarios that interviewers often emphasize. Whether you're a beginner or an experienced developer, this resource aims to enhance your understanding and improve your interview performance. 1. What is an API and what are its main purposes? An API, or application programming interface, is a set of rules and protocols that allows different software applications to communicate with each other. Its main purposes include enabling integration between systems, allowing for the exchange of data, and providing standardized ways for developers to access the functionality of a service or application. APIs facilitate the development of applications by abstracting the underlying complexity, allowing developers to focus on building features rather than handling low-level interactions. They are essential for creating scalable and maintainable software architectures. 2. How do you approach designing an API from scratch? Designing an API from scratch begins with understanding the requirements and use cases. Engage with stakeholders to gather insights about functionality and data needs. Create a clear specification that outlines endpoints, data models, and response formats. It's essential to choose between REST, GraphQL, or other architectures based on the project requirements. Then, focus on versioning strategies and authentication methods early in the design process. Prototyping with tools like Swagger can help visualize the API, enabling feedback and adjustments before development begins. Testing and documentation should be integral throughout the process. 3. What are some best practices for RESTful API design? When designing a RESTful API, several best practices should be followed. Use consistent naming conventions for endpoints, favor nouns over verbs, and ensure that URIs are intuitive and resource-oriented. Implement proper HTTP methods, get, post, put, delete, to reflect the action being performed. Utilize status codes accurately to communicate the result of a request. Pagination, filtering, and sorting should be supported for large datasets. Additionally, provide comprehensive documentation for developers and ensure security measures, such as authentication and rate limiting, are in place. 4. How would you handle versioning in an API? Handling versioning in an API is crucial for maintaining compatibility as the API evolves. One common approach is to include the version number in the URL, such as v1, resource. This method makes it clear which version clients are using. Alternatively, versioning can be handled through request headers, allowing more flexibility without altering the URL structure. It's important to deprecate older versions gracefully, providing clients with ample notice before removing support. Documentation should clearly outline changes between versions, ensuring users understand the impact of updates on their applications. 5. Explain the concept of idempotency in REST APIs and how it's implemented. Idempotency refers to the property of certain HTTP methods where multiple identical requests yield the same result as a single request. In REST APIs, this is particularly important for ensuring that repeated requests do not alter the state of the resource beyond the initial application. For instance, the HTTP put method is idempotent. Sending the same put request multiple times will not create duplicate resources or change the result after the first request. To implement ID impotency, APIs should ensure that operations can be repeated without side effects, such as using unique identifiers for requests or returning consistent responses. This helps clients safely retry requests, improving reliability and user experience. 6. What are the main differences between PUT and PATCH requests in REST APIs? The main difference between PUT and PATCH requests lies in their functionality and intent. PUT is used to update a resource entirely by replacing the current representation with the provided data. If a field is omitted in the request, it will be set to null or removed. In contrast, PATCH is designed for partial updates, allowing clients to send only the fields they wish to modify. This makes PATCH more efficient for scenarios where only a few attributes need to change, as it reduces payload size and processing time. Understanding these differences is essential for effective API design. 7. How do you handle authentication and authorization in API design? Handling authentication and authorization in API design requires a strategic approach. Start with selecting an authentication method such as OAuth 2.0, API keys, or JWT, JSON web tokens. For OAuth 2.0, ensure you implement the authorization code flow for secure access. Utilize scopes to define access levels for different users. For authorization, enforce role-based access control, RBAC, to restrict resources based on user roles. Always validate tokens on each request to secure endpoints. Implement HTTPS to protect data in transit and regularly review permissions to maintain security compliance. 8. What strategies would you use to design a scalable API that can handle increased traffic? Designing a scalable API requires several strategies, 
First, implementing load balancing helps distribute incoming requests across multiple servers, preventing any single server from becoming a bottleneck. Using caching mechanisms, such as Redis or Memcached, can reduce the load on the database by storing frequently accessed data in memory. Additionally, employing asynchronous processing for long-running tasks can improve responsiveness. Utilizing microservices architecture allows for independent scaling of different components. Lastly, optimizing database queries and using pagination in responses can significantly enhance performance under heavy traffic. 9. Can you explain the concept of rate limiting in API development and its importance? Rate limiting is a technique used in API development to control the amount of incoming requests from clients within a specified time frame. This mechanism helps prevent abuse and ensures fair usage among all users. By setting limits on the number of requests allowed per user, API providers can protect their systems from overload and potential denial of service attacks. Rate limiting also enhances user experience by maintaining service reliability and performance. Common strategies include fixed window, sliding window, and token bucket algorithms, allowing developers to choose the best fit for their application needs. 10. How do you design APIs to be easily consumable by clients? Designing APIs for easy consumption involves several key strategies. First, use clear and consistent naming conventions for endpoints, making them intuitive and self-explanatory. Second, provide comprehensive documentation that includes examples, use cases, and error codes. Third, offer SDKs or client libraries in popular programming languages to simplify integration. Fourth, ensure that responses are predictable and consistent in structure, using standard formats like JSON or XML. Finally, consider incorporating tools like GraphQL that allow clients to query only the data they need, enhancing flexibility and reducing overhead. 11. What are some common HTTP status codes, and when should they be used? HTTP status codes are essential for indicating the result of an API request. Some common codes include 200 OK, request succeeded, and the response contains the requested data. 201 created, request succeeded, and a new resource has been created. 204 no content, request succeeded, but there's no content to return. 400 bad request, the server cannot process the request due to client error. 401 unauthorized, authentication is required, and it has failed or not been provided. 404 not found, the requested resource does not exist. 500 internal server error, the server encountered an unexpected condition. Using appropriate status codes helps clients understand the outcome of their requests effectively. 12. How would you handle long-running operations with AREST? API? Handling long-running operations in AREST. API requires a well-defined strategy to ensure a smooth user experience. One common approach is to use asynchronous processing. When a client initiates a long-running task, the API should immediately respond with a 202 accepted status along with a URL to check the status of the operation. The server can then process the request in the background. Polling or webhook notifications can inform the client about the task's completion or any errors. This model separates the initiation of the task from its completion, allowing for better resource management and user feedback. 13. Explain the Richardson Maturity Model and its levels. The Richardson Maturity Model is a framework that categorizes RESTful APIs into levels based on their adherence to REST principles. Level 0. The API operates as a single endpoint, usually using HTTP for communication without leveraging its capabilities. Level 1. The API is organized around resources, with multiple endpoints for different entities but still uses only POST methods. Level 2. The API utilizes standard HTTP methods, GET, POST, PUT, DELETE, to manipulate resources, making better use of the protocol. Level 3. The API incorporates HATEOAS, Hypermedia as the engine of application state providing links within responses that guide clients in navigating the API dynamically. This model helps developers understand how to enhance their APIs progressively. 14. What are the key components of a well-designed API documentation? API documentation should include several key components to ensure clarity and usability. First, an overview of the API, including its purpose and main functionalities, sets the context. Next, detailed endpoint descriptions with methods, parameters, and request response examples help users understand how to interact with the API authentication guidelines are crucial for secure access. Additionally, error codes and messages should be clearly defined to assist users in troubleshooting. Lastly, inclusion of versioning information and change logs keeps users informed about updates and modifications. 15. How do you approach error handling and communicate errors to API consumers? Error handling in API design involves creating a consistent and informative mechanism for reporting issues to consumers. Start by defining a clear error response format, typically using JSON or XML, that includes an error code, a descriptive message, and any relevant details. Utilize standard HTTP status codes to indicate the type of error, such as 400 for client errors or 500 for server errors. 
it's essential to log errors internally for troubleshooting while providing concise, user-friendly messages externally. Encourage consumers to handle errors gracefully by including documentation on possible error responses and their meanings. 16. What is HATEOAS and how does it relate to REST, API design? HATEOAS, which stands for Hypermedia as the Engine of Application State, is a constraint of the REST application architecture. It allows clients to navigate an API dynamically through Hypermedia links provided in the responses. This means that the client interacts with the API entirely through the links and media types returned by the server, without needing to hardcode URIs. HATEOAS promotes discoverability, enabling clients to understand available actions and resources without prior knowledge, enhancing flexibility and adaptability in API interactions. 17. How would you design an API to support both JSON and XML formats? Designing an API that supports both JSON and XML formats involves several key steps. First, specify the content type header in requests to indicate the desired format. For responses, check the accept header to determine the format to return. Implement serializers for both JSON and XML, allowing the API to convert data structures into the requested format seamlessly. Additionally, ensure that your API documentation clearly outlines how to request each format. Testing both serializers thoroughly is critical to ensure consistent behavior and correctness of the data returned in each format. 18. What are microservices, and how do they relate to API design? Microservices are an architectural style that structures an application as a collection of small, independently deployable services. Each service is focused on a specific business function and communicates over well-defined APIs. This approach facilitates scalability, as services can be developed, deployed, and scaled independently. In API design, microservices enable teams to create APIs that are aligned with specific business capabilities, allowing for faster development cycles. They often employ RESTful APIs for communication, promoting loose coupling between services and enhancing maintainability. 19. How do you ensure backwards compatibility when updating an API? Ensuring backwards compatibility when updating an API involves several strategies. First, versioning the API allows clients to use older versions without disruption. You can introduce new endpoints while keeping existing ones intact. Second, utilize feature flags to gradually roll out new features, allowing clients to opt in. Third, avoid removing or renaming existing fields in responses, instead, mark them as deprecated. Clear documentation on changes and providing a migration guide helps clients adapt smoothly. Finally, thorough testing with existing client implementations ensures that updates do not break existing functionality. 20. What is the role of caching in API design, and how would you implement it? Caching plays a vital role in API design by enhancing performance and reducing latency. By storing frequently accessed data closer to the client or at intermediary nodes, you can minimize the load on your servers and improve response times. Implement caching by using HTTP cache headers, like cache control, etag, and expires, to instruct clients and proxies on how long to store responses. Additionally, consider using a caching layer, such as Redis or Memcached, to store data temporarily and handle cache invalidation effectively to ensure clients receive fresh data when necessary. 21. How do you handle pagination in API responses? Pagination in API responses is crucial for managing large datasets efficiently. A common approach is to use query parameters like page and limit to specify the current page and the number of items per page. Alternatively, cursor-based pagination can be employed, where clients receive a token pointing to the next set of results. This method is more efficient for large datasets as it avoids skipping records. Always include metadata in responses, such as total item count and links to the next and previous pages, ensuring clients can navigate through the dataset easily. 22. What are the pros and cons of using GraphQL versus REST for API design? GraphQL offers flexibility, allowing clients to request exactly the data they need, reducing overfetching and underfetching issues common in REST. It supports complex queries and provides a single endpoint for all interactions, simplifying integration. However, it can introduce complexity in server implementation and requires careful management of query performance. REST, on the other hand, is simpler and more widely understood, with established patterns and practices. It may require multiple endpoints for different resources, leading to potential inefficiencies in data retrieval. Each approach has its merits depending on specific use cases and application requirements. 23. How would you design an API to support real-time updates or streaming data? To design an API for real-time updates or streaming data, consider using WebSockets or Server Sent Events, SSE, for bidirectional communication. These protocols enable persistent connections, allowing the server to push updates to clients instantly. Implementing a publish-subscribe model can facilitate efficient data distribution, where clients subscribe to specific topics or channels. Ensure proper authentication and authorization mechanisms to secure the data flow. Additionally, incorporate fallback options for clients that cannot support real-time connections, such as polling, to maintain accessibility. 24. 
What security considerations should be taken into account when designing an API? When designing an API, several security considerations must be prioritized. First, implement authentication mechanisms such as OAuth or API keys to ensure only authorized users can access the API next. Enforce HTTPS to encrypt data in transit, protecting against eavesdropping. Input validation is crucial to prevent injection attacks. Rate limiting helps mitigate denial of service attacks by restricting the number of requests a user can make. Additionally, ensure proper error handling to avoid exposing sensitive information in error messages. Regular security audits and updates are essential to address emerging vulnerabilities. 25. How do you test and validate API designs before implementation? Testing and validating API designs involve several steps. First, create detailed API specifications using tools like OpenAPI or Swagger, which can serve as a contract between developers and consumers. Next, use automated testing frameworks such as Postman or JMeter to execute functional, load, and security tests. Mock servers can simulate API behavior, allowing for early testing without backend dependencies. Engage in user testing to gather feedback on usability and clarity. Regularly review API design against best practices and industry standards to ensure adherence before deployment. In this video, we've explored the top 25 API design interview questions and their answers, equipping you with essential insights to excel in your interviews. Understanding these concepts is vital for any developer looking to make a mark in the world of API design. We hope this guide has been informative and has boosted your confidence. If you found the content helpful, please like the video and subscribe to our channel for more valuable resources. Your support helps us create more content tailored to your needs. Thank you for watching.